A very good afternoon, Mr. Kalra. It's such a great honor and a great pleasure to have you with us in this uh, lovely, lovely uh, uh, afternoon and with, with uh, over over uh, maybe a thousand students uh, joining. That's the maximum the Zoom can support from all over the country. And uh, thanks, Abdullah, for connecting. I was also supposed to attend that meeting, but it's such a such a great pleasure. I mean, I've heard so much about you from the peers and we have got many common friends possibly who talks about you very highly and you are one of the entrepreneurs that we look up to. At IIHM, we foster the spirit of entrepreneurship. We foster the spirit of creating professionally, uh, uh, modern professional hospitality graduates and who are always in tune with the times and then we, that's the reason we change our curriculum every single year. Our last two years, we are uh, heavily into hospital technology, digital marketing. And from last year, we have introduced AI as one of our uh, core paper, uh, which has got same kind of uh, uh, credits as in food and beverage or in uh, front office rooms division and culinary. So we are putting a lot of things and it's not just about chat GPT or uh, co-pilot and things like that. It's about understanding how the business runs on AI because that's the present. I think that's not just the future. So we have got uh, one person, ladies and gentlemen, my dear students all over uh, the country and it's a great pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, coming and joining and talking to the entrepreneurs and the hospitality professionals of tomorrow. So this is something which is absolutely uh, fantastic and we all look forward to listen to you. Over to you, Mr. Kaldan, over to Abdullah. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Dr. Bose. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and thank you, Abdullah, for hosting me. And thank you for that beautiful video. Uh, that's very nice of uh, you to put together. Thank you. From the hotel booking sector, um, do you use AI as um, aggressively as you do for the flight booking or uh, is it like sacrosanct for the flights as my sector? No, 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 not at all. So it's across the board. And uh, I would say, in fact, if there is more focus going on today, it is clearly on the uh, hospitality side for our business. So like I said, even if you look at our numbers, every quarter on quarter, we are actually increasing the product mix towards hotels and homestays and uh, accommodations broadly. And the reason is very simple. So I think some of you would have figured this out already, which is, and students, please pay attention to this. Any market that you get into where supply is fragmented, as an intermediary, you can add a lot of value. Let me explain. So let us look at the homestay market, which is a very new thing, entirely fragmented. Are there any chains in homestays? Very, very, very few. Largely, it's individual homeowners. They have maybe a house, a flat in Goa, or they have something up in the hills or wherever else. They are now looking to put this online. So the value that we can add, or to put it more crudely, the power that we wield in the ecosystem is much greater. Because on one side, we have customers looking for such homes. In COVID, we all know a lot of people wanted to go to homestays over uh, hotels because, you know, that was considered safer, remote. You're not in touch with others. Even I did similar holidays like this during COVID. So now that's become mainstream. Now you move to hotels. If you move to hotels again, really, if I ask you people even being in hospitality to name 20 chains, Many of you will start struggling after 10 or 15. 10, everybody will name, but an Indian chains. So take away the international, you'll start struggling because that's the reality. After 20, 25, 30, there are very few chains of merit or of size. After that, it is independent properties. Again, with independent properties, how does a small independent property of 10 or 15 rooms, let us say in a, in a popular part of the country, uh, I saw Pune out there, let's say Pune. How does it, reach out to its customers who are looking for that kind of hotel because it's near, let's say, Koregaon, it's near a part of town where they want to stay. Marketing on Google is very expensive. As we all know, you pay a lot. So we become the platform where when people are searching in Pune, in Koregaon, and with a certain budget, that property will pop up. 
So using AI there is very smart because there we can give a very personalized answer. Now, let's say Dr. Bose come with us, come to us before. We have a history. Is anyway a uh, MMT Platinum member. So we have his history. Now we should use that smartly. Where are the kind of places he likes to stay? How does he like to travel? So both hotel and air. But if we are not personalizing and not using AI with every input he does, so every search that he does is giving us a clue without you know, compromising on privacy, we should be using those inputs to give him a far more meaningful feed next time. You know, there's no point if he's, if he's never looking at budget hotels, which I assume he doesn't, why are we showing him budget properties? Or if he's flying in a, he likes flying always in the morning, coming back in the evening, we should be showing him those flights first. So there's a lot of intelligence you can build in on both air and hotel, and in fact, even on bus. So it's across the board, sir. Our thinking is not line of business or product offering. Our thinking is what does customer want? And let me tell you, every time the customer tells us what they want, it's just, are you listening or not? It's not like they put up a placard and say, this is what I'm looking for. It's clues that they give you. And these are customer insights, which when you connect the dots, you can come up with very, very good and meaningful solutions if you're willing to listen. So my most productive and favorite use of my time at work today even today, is to spend time with customers. And I don't even have to be at work for that. Whenever I'm traveling, I love to talk to people sitting next to me, whether it's a plane or a train, and to understand their booking process, how they do it, what they do, what they would typically like. And my company knows every time I complete a trip, they're going to start getting long, long voice notes from me about new ideas because customers will tell us. Today, the customer is so different and from so many parts of the country, there's so much money in tier three and tier four, forget tier two. People are traveling. They want to travel India and overseas, but they we don't understand their what their needs because they are not necessarily coming from the same background, socioeconomical, et cetera, or even age profile as us. So it's great to understand the new customer, the changing needs of this customer, and then put it forward to our product and uh, tech guys to build a new uh, feature which can help them. So I'm constantly doing that. And I think that is something which is ingrained at everyone in uh, in MMT to be thinking that way. Excellent, excellent. Uh, in fact, in fact, just to take it forward, I mean, I've been, in fact, uh, uh, speaking to all my industry friends in hotel sector. And as you know, um, Mr. Kara, oh, over the last 40 years, we have seen that hospitality sector, uh, India, Indian hospitality sector has always kind of shied away from technology. Yeah. It actually took a COVID to get us in as compared with the aviation sector, which years, years back went to the tech, tech sector. And that was one of the issues actually during COVID people become more tech savvy in our industry because hospital industry was like a lot of people, you know, a lot of um, people doing a lot of work which is possibly uh, not required. But one of the things in AI, which I want to do and possibly make my trip can think, as you said, that a lot of people gives you a lot of ideas. I can book my uh, first row Excel rows in the flights from make my trip, isn't it? Yes. Um, one A, B, C, D, e, F, and then the Excel rows on the 12, 13, 14. Can't we book a hotel room facing the swimming pool? Can we book a hotel room on the seventh floor towards the city side? Why not? It's a brilliant observation, sir, and thank you for bringing it up. It really is a very keen observation. And I am all for it. The reason, the limitation, as you would have guessed today, is that the hotels are not willing to put up their inventory by room. So I've actually taken this to some hotels, and particularly to hotels where every room is different. So a great example is Nimrana Chain. Nimrana is, some of you will know the chain, every room is different because it's a heritage kind of property. So that being online as a separate room is there. But the moment you go to the big boxes as they're called, so you go to a big box hotel, which has 200 rooms, 300 rooms, 400 rooms, they have five categories. They'll have your, uh, you know, what they can call deluxe. They won't call it basic, but then they'll call it, you know, uh, uh, deluxe suite, then they'll call it other kinds. So you'll have four or five categories. but if I want to know I want this view, why can't I get it? Some hotels have it, by the way. 
So if you go into the details of certain hotels, even in India today, you'll find it. And some chains are being very progressive. Some have now realized the value, saying that customers actually pinpoint that. They want to be on high floors or they want to be on low floors. They uh, City view and especially like, so if you go to beach properties, I think you get sea view. Now in sea view, that you get in most of the resorts, but not everyone because it's a big difference. Why have you gone all the way to a beach so that you can enjoy the sea either when you're outside or even the view from inside? Because it's pleasing to the senses. So therefore, there can be a premium for that, but they should allow you to book that online. So today, I think we had maybe 5%, 10% today of hotels are already doing that. But I can assure you sooner than later, the pressure is there for them to do it, which means inventorizing every room. Yes. And, and it's not hard to do. I mean, if you can do it for every seat, like you said, why can't you do it for every room? Airlines served by definition are more tech enabled. In fact, even in my previous uh, metaphor, I was giving you the analogy of airlines. Airlines, there are very few in the country today. What do we have? Four or five airlines. Right? Yeah. So the bargaining power is with airline. So we make very, very little money, but we look at airlines as a means to get customers and then cross sell and upsell to them other things. Yeah. No, no, that's that's I I, uh, I think is a great answer. But then, yeah. That we can still choose a sea facing room or a city facing room, but I can't choose the floor. I can't choose possibly other 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 uh, parameter. But I'm sure uh, that is going to happen in the Sorry, next. Uh, there, yeah. is there is pressure from us, but uh, I think at some point, you know what it takes very often is for one big chain to do it. Then yeah. everybody follows. Yes. So we are trying to do it with one big chain and then others will follow. But yeah, absolutely, it. absolutely. And you are doing such fantastic work with the car now, caps now, and possibly there can be a combo between the car and the flight and the hotel. Yeah. You know, you can have a combo deal for uh, maybe for senior citizens, the car will take from the home to the airport and off to the flight and then again the car to hotel and back to home. So that can be a great combo with a great pricing. Correct, sir. Book together and save. That is the way to go because no no big supplier likes their product to be discounted up front. But this is a concept called bundling. So I think I think you, by virtue of the fact that you're a successful businessman, but you really understand the insights of travel. Now I'm going to get you to come and speak to our people at some point. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.